last, I got my beloved Deluxe Reverb reissue amp back from uh, some repair. So I dropped it off in May and I just got it back. One of the things I've noticed, well, it's not really noticing, it's just kind of a fact, is that depending on where you live, there may or may not be a lot of people that know how to work on these amps. I'm not from where I live now, but I've been here for eight years. And as far as I know, the, the gentleman that I brought my amp to to fix, it's about the only game in, in town. And I live in a decent sized town. And not only is he the only game in town, there's people from decently sized cities from around here that also send their stuff to this guy. But anyhow, not to go into details, but uh, he's dealing with some things that make uh, work difficult. Um, I get the amp back, sounds great, but it just reminded me, like I hadn't had this amp. I bought this amp in 2015, had it worked on once very soon after I bought it, where I used to live in Virginia. This go around, I, both the power tubes were replaced. I think you pretty much, if you replace one, you have to replace the other because they have to be matched and biased and whatnot. Don't really know all those details. And that's part of the problem, you know, with tube amps, you, you do have to have some know-how to work on them. Not that I'm sure that uh, these are not things that can't be learned, uh, but there are, there's some dangers also because there's capacitors or at least a capacitor in every tube amp that, and capacitors retain voltage and you can electrocute yourself so and just being able to diagnose what the issue is both power tubes were replaced rectifier tube there was a blown fuse um, at least two of the preamp tubes were replaced so it had some issues going on but sounds great like i don't know how long i was operating at a, a diminished capacity before it finally stopped working but it works now and I'm appreciative. But yeah, going back to, I nine years ago, I bought another, before I got this one, I bought another Fender amp and um, Guitar Center thing. Got a, a Supersonic, shows up, and uh, Reverb doesn't work, so I bring it back to the store. And of course, the Guitar Center, at, at least the one where I bought it from, they didn't do any repairs, so I, so I uh, I call a local repair guy where I was living at the time that was pretty reputable. And uh, he had just been in an accident, wasn't available. So at that point, I just sent it back, ended up buying another one. But it just kind of drives home the point where, you know, it's a, it's a fairly specialized um, skill to be able to work on these amps. Might not be a lot of guys that can do it. Thankful that that we have a guy in my town and that he was able to get to it and that he's doing better. So it's all good. Plug this thing in. Sounds great. I'm very happy. And not for nothing, but I mean, what's up with uh, retailers? Decent sized retailers and not like national chain retailers, like decent sized music shops selling a product that they can't I mean, I, maybe that's asking too much, um, but it seems to be a thing. One of the thing, what I want to talk about just briefly, using the Pog today as like a, a clean boost or just a boost. I'm not sure if putting clean in front of a in front of boost is a misnomer or not. I know that that we do that a lot but I'm just gonna say it's a boost. So I was using the POG as a boost. So how I do that is I basically put the uh, dry signal all the way to the right, and then I barely have the octaves cracked on just enough so that the, the pedal will make noise. But I've noticed with you know a lot of my pedals that aren't you know overdrives or boost pedals, they all kind of boost the signal, uh, which I guess is a good thing. You don't want a, a pedal that's sucking the signal. Most of the, the pedals that I have, and I don't have a lot of pedals, my non-overdrive pedals would be the aforementioned Pog. I got this 
Boss Reverb R RV6. This uh, Boss Digital D Delay DD3. Cattle and Bread, Bella Pock Deluxe. And what all these pedals do, another overused term, transparent. But when I click these pedals on, it, they very transparently boost the signal. So, you know, using the POG as a boost pedal is not a, a great way to use this pedal, but I'm just here in my house. So it does it very nicely. So I just wanted to demonstrate that. So I'll, I'll do a couple more sound samples. Uh, but yeah, basically when I, when I played my little bit of music at the beginning of this video, into the POG, straight into the amp. And uh, I think what the what the what the pog will do with the micro pog in this case, what it does is it just tightens up the signal, makes it a little more um, focused, a little more present. And uh, I'll do some sound samples and try to demonstrate that some more. So sound samples, I got I'm into the normal channel, and uh, yeah, for this whole thing, no reverb was used. Using the aux box, the signal's going to the aux box. No reverb from, coming from the aux box either. No pedals with reverb, which it's a little interesting playing this amp with no reverb. Uh, it's definitely uh, a little reverb goes a long way on this amp too. I mean, I very rarely have it above like two and a half or three. But yeah, pretty strident uh, sound coming out of this with no reverb. But I really, I do really like the normal channel on this but i it i almost always add reverb somehow to whatever i'm doing but i i didn't want to do that for what i was playing here and uh i had the volume on six troubles on eight bases on two. Oh, another thing i mean long, as i said amp hadn't been worked on for going on nine years it was probably long overdue even with all the busted tubes uh, but it's so quiet now and uh, just everything about it is better. And I, I've always liked this amp, so it, it's just better now, which is awesome. So let's do these sound samples. I'll start with the, you know, I talked about how I had the POG set up. Go ahead and do that. Oh, one other thing, uh, just getting the amp worked on. One of the things I've noticed is the, the bass response is much better. Um, could be pretty flubby when you put played the E and the A strings um, before I got it worked on. It, it's just really tightened up. I'll start with the POG on and the, like I said, to me, it kind of tightens up the signal a little bit, makes it a little more present. It's very subtle. Uh, I don't think you'll really notice any difference probably unless you have headphones on, but Without further ado, after much ado, here it goes. Pedal on. Thank you. 
in conclusion, you know, kind of wrap up all my unconnected thoughts between using pedals not otherwise designed for how you use them as a boost or how much I like my deluxe reverb reissue amp. I think the main takeaway for me is um, try to get a little smarter on, on tube amps because it's I got two tube amps. It's the only way I can make noise with my guitar. And if they don't work, I don't really even know where to start other than, you know, obviously bring them in, in for repair. But, you know, like a lot of the things we use in life that we don't understand, but we rely on, I'm going to add this to the list of things that I should probably get smarter on. Thanks.